Peter Principle from Wikipedia, the free online encyclopedia at wikipedia.org. The Peter Principle is a concept in management developed by Lawrence J. Peter, which observes that people in a hierarchy tend to rise to their level of incompetence. In other words, an employee is promoted based on their success in previous jobs until they reach a level at which they are no longer competent, as skills in one job do not necessarily translate to another. The concept was elucidated in the 1969 book The Peter Principle by Peter and Raymond Hull. The Peter Principle was published by William Morrow and Company in 1969. Peter and Hull intended the book to be satire, but it became popular as it was seen to make a serious point about the shortcomings of how people are promoted within hierarchical organizations. Hull wrote the text based on Peter's research. The Peter Principle has been the subject of much later commentary and research. Summary the Peter Principle states that a person who is competent at their job will earn promotion to a more senior position, which requires different skills. If the promoted person lacks the skills required for the new role, then they will be incompetent at their new level, and so they will not be promoted again. But if they are competent at their new role, then they will be promoted again, and they will continue to be promoted until they eventually reach a level at which they are incompetent. Being incompetent, they do not qualify to be promoted again, and so remain stuck at that final level for the rest of their career, termed final placement or Peter's Plateau. This outcome is inevitable given enough time and assuming that there are enough positions in the hierarchy to which competent employees may be promoted. The Peter Principle is therefore expressed as, quote, in a hierarchy, every employee tends to rise to his level of incompetence, end quote. This leads to Peter's corollary, quote, in time, every post tends to be occupied by an employee who is incompetent to carry out its duties, end quote. Hall calls the study of how hierarchies work hierarchiology. The Peter Principle Lawrence J. Peter had conducted the research that led to the formulation of the Peter Principle well before publishing his findings. He worked with Raymond Hull on a book that elucidated his observations about hierarchies. The principle is named for Peter because although Hull actually wrote the book, it is a summary of Peter's research. The Peter Principle was published by William Morrow and Company in 1969. Summary In chapters 1 and 2, Peter and Hull give various examples of the Peter Principle in action. In each case, the higher position required skills which were not required at the level immediately below. For example, a competent school teacher may make a competent assistant principal, but then go on to be an incompetent principal. The teacher was competent at educating children, and as assistant principal he was good at dealing with parents and other teachers, but as principal he was poor at maintaining good relations with the school board and the superintendent. In Chapter 3, Peter and Hull discuss apparent exceptions to this principle and then debunk them. One of these illusory exceptions is when someone who is incompetent is still promoted anyway. This is known as percussive sublimation, as in being kicked upstairs. But it is only a pseudo-promotion, a move from one unproductive position to another. This improves staff morale, as other employees believe that they too can be promoted again. Another pseudo-promotion is the lateral arabesque, when a person is moved out of the way and given a longer job title. While incompetence is merely a barrier to further promotion, super-incompetence is grounds for dismissal. So is super-competence. In both cases, they tend to disrupt the hierarchy. One example of a super-competent employee is a teacher of children with special needs who was so effective at educating them that, after a year, they exceeded all expectations at reading and arithmetic, but the teacher was still fired because he had neglected to devote enough time to bead-stringing and finger-painting. Chapters 4 and 5 deal with the methods of achieving promotion, push and pull, Push means the employee's own efforts, such as working hard and taking self-improvement courses. This is usually not very effective because of the seniority factor. The next level up is often fully occupied, blocking the path to promotion. Pull is far more effective and refers to accelerated promotion brought about by the efforts of an employee's mentors or patrons. Chapter 6 explains why good followers do not become good leaders. In Chapter 7, Peter and Hull describe the effect of the Peter Principle in politics and government. Chapter 8, entitled Hints and Foreshadowings, discusses the work of earlier writers on the subject of incompetence, such as Sigmund Freud, Karl Marx, and Alexander Pope. Chapter 9 explains that once employees have reached their level of incompetence, they always lack insight into their situation. Peter and Hull go on to explain why aptitude tests don't work and are actually counterproductive. Finally, they describe summit competence, when someone reaches the highest level in their organization and yet is still competent at that level. This is only because there were not enough ranks in the hierarchy or because they did not have time to reach a level of incompetence. Such people often seek a level of incompetence in another hierarchy. For example, Socrates was an outstanding teacher, but a terrible defense attorney. This is known as compulsive incompetence. Chapter 10 explains why trying to assist an incompetent employee by promoting another employee to act as his assistant doesn't work. Incompetence plus incompetence equals incompetence.
Chapters 11 and 12 describe the various medical and psychological manifestations of stress which may result when someone reaches his level of incompetence as well as other symptoms such as certain characteristic habits of speech or behavior. Chapter 13 considers whether it is possible for an employee who has reached his level of incompetence to be happy and healthy once he gets there. The answer is no if he realizes his true situation, and yes if he does not. In Chapter 14, various ways of avoiding promotion to the final level are described. Attempting to refuse an offered promotion is ill-advised, and is only practicable if the employee is not married and has no one else to answer to. Generally, it is better to avoid being considered for promotion in the first place by pretending to be incompetent while one is actually still employed at a level of competence. This is creative incompetence, and several examples of successful techniques are given. It works best if the chosen field of incompetence does not actually impair one's work. The concluding chapter applies Peter's principle to the entire human species at an evolutionary level and asks whether humanity can survive in the long run or will become extinct upon reaching its level of incompetence as technology advances. Other research other commentators made observations similar to the Peter Principle long before Peter's research. Gotthold Ephraim Lessing's 1763 play, Mina von Barnhelm, features an army sergeant who shuns the opportunity to move up in the ranks, saying, I am a good sergeant, I might easily make a bad captain, and certainly an even worse general. One knows from experience. Similarly, Karl von Clausewitz, lived 1780-1831, wrote that, Quote, there is nothing more common than to hear of men losing their energy on being raised to a higher position to which they do not feel themselves equal, end quote. Closely echoing Peter, Spanish philosopher José Ortega y Gasset, lived 1883 to 1955, wrote, All public employees should be demoted to their immediately lower level, as they have been promoted until turning incompetent. A number of scholars have engaged in research interpreting the Peter Principle and its effects. In 2000, Edward Lazier explored two possible explanations for the phenomenon. First is the idea that employees work harder to gain a promotion and then slack off once it is achieved. The other is that it is a statistical process. Workers who are promoted have passed a particular benchmark of productivity based on factors that cannot necessarily be replicated in their new role, leading to a Peter Principle situation. Lazier concluded that the former explanation only occurs under particular compensation structures, whereas the latter always holds up. Alessandro Placino, Andrea Reposarda, and Cesar Garofalo used an agent-based modeling approach to simulate the promotion of employees in a system where the Peter Principle is assumed to be true. They found that the best way to improve efficiency in an enterprise is to promote people randomly, or to shortlist the best and the worst performer in a given group, from which the person to be promoted is then selected randomly. For this work, they won the 2010 edition of the parody Ig Nobel Prize in Management Science. In 2018, professors Alan Benson, Danielle Lee, and Kelly Hsu analyzed sales workers' performance and promotion practices at 214 American businesses to test the veracity of the Peter Principle. They found that these companies tended to promote employees to management position based on their performance in their previous position rather than based on managerial potential. Consistent with the Peter Principle, the researchers found that high-performing sales employees were likelier to be promoted and that they were likelier to perform poorly as managers, leading to considerable costs to the businesses. The Peter Principle inspired Scott Adams, creator of the comic strip Dilbert, to develop a similar concept, the Dilbert Principle. The Dilbert Principle holds that incompetent employees are promoted to management positions to get them out of the workflow. Adams explained the idea in his 1996 business book, The Dilbert Principle, and it has since been analyzed alongside the Peter Principle. Joao Ricardo Faria wrote that the Dilbert Principle is a suboptimal version of the Peter Principle and leads to even lower profitability than the Peter Principle. Response by Organizations Companies and organizations shaped their policies to contend with the Peter Principle. Lazier stated that some companies expect that productivity will regress to the mean following promotion in their hiring and promotion practices. Other companies have adopted up-or-out strategies, such as the Kravath system, in which employees who do not advance are periodically fired. The Kravath system was developed at the law firm Kravath, Swain and Moore, which made a practice of hiring chiefly recent law graduates, promoting internally, and firing employees who do not perform at the required level. Brian Christian and Tom Griffiths have suggested the additive increase multiplicative decrease algorithm as a solution to the Peter Principle less severe than firing employees who fail to advance. They propose a dynamic hierarchy in which employees are regularly either promoted or reassigned to a lower level so that any worker who is promoted to their point of failure is soon moved to an area where they are productive. See also Dunning-Kruger effect, Founder's syndrome, negative selection, politics, Parkinson's law, Putt's Law and the Successful Technocrat, and Systemantics. This article was recorded on September 18, 2019.